you and I are going to have a little play today. We are going to test some new makeup launches. We've got some really exciting releases in this video, including oh, the new Fenty blushes and the new Fenty bronzers. Look, no spoilers, but these are amazing. They're so great. We've got some real high-end luxury foundations to test and also some drugstore winners as well. So a little bit of everything. All the photos and the swatches that you see throughout this video are actually from the PR unboxings that I do on Instagram stories. So I put them into a little highlight called new makeup so that you can watch them at any time. And I refresh that PR unboxing about every two to three weeks. So yeah, if you love PR unboxings, definitely go check out my Instagram. Let's get onto the video. Let's start with the Glow Recipe Lip Pop. So this is a lip balm from Glow, Glow Recipe recent release and it was so funny because when I showed this on Instagram stories, it had such a strong response. So many people DM me about this lip balm and that is such a mood. I just wanna say I relate so hard to that. I am also very concerned about the lip balm. So this is designed to both uh, nourish the lips as a regular balm, but also it has some exfoliating ingredients. So some uh, chemical exfoliants, AHAs, and also apparently a little bit of physical exfoliant, which is funny because I don't feel any greediness in this at all. That would bother me. Yeah, so it's a, it's a really lovely balm formula. I will say that if you give it a few minutes, it gets progressively pinker but it's a nice pink kind of tint. The AHA hasn't irritated my lips in any way. So far, I'm really enjoying it. All right, onto foundation. I really wanna try the new By Terry Hyaluronic Hydra Foundation. On the By Terry site, they call this a hydrating formula. It's got buildable coverage, hyaluronic acid, uh, protects with SPF 30, long wearing vegan formula and weightless. That sounds like my kind of foundation. So I'm gonna use the shade 200N. I don't think this is gonna be perfect, but we can make it work. So first impression feels quite sheer. This sponge, by the way, is one of the Nikia Joy sponges. Nikia is just such a lovely person. She's exactly like she is in her videos, absolutely delightful. And she has a makeup range. And so many of you guys have asked me to re review it, so I'm gonna be featuring a few of those products in today's video. But this sponge feels glorious. I think this is potentially even bouncier than a beauty blender. Okay, so that's on one half of my face compared to the other. Yeah, it's got a nice, I would say sheer to maybe medium coverage and definitely a bit of a blurring finish. Like I feel like my skin looks really smooth. Interesting, so after a, about a minute of letting it set, it's definitely got a little bit more matte. So what I would say is this would be great for someone who's looking for a sheer to medium coverage, a little bit more of a satin matte finish, and also the most prominent characteristic of this foundation to me is how smoothing it is. Interesting, I'm, I might have to get a different shade in that one and I'll continue to test it for you guys, I'll report back. I actually have a second foundation that I just wanted to compare. This is the Suku Nude Wear Liquid, a new release from Suku, and it's also a drop of style. This one is a little bit more fluid, so it's almost like less viscous um, than the By Terry. I'm gonna pat this around the edges of my face just so that we can get a just a little bit of an idea. Hmm. So I think it's pretty clear that the Suki one is definitely dewier. It's catching a lot of shine there, but it's still very sheer because it hasn't covered that little blemish that I've got there. Interesting, so if you're looking for a little bit more of a satin matte, go with the By Terry, or if you're looking for a little, something a little bit dewier, you might like the Suki. I'm kind of late on this train, but uh, Charlotte Tilbury brought out some correctors. Beautiful compact. Gosh. She does a good job with the packaging, but the uh, correctors are peachy correctors for under the eyes. So there's a more orange, uh, deeper orange hue for deeper skin tones, but I've got this one in number one fair. I'm gonna give this a go. My circles have been pretty bad recently, actually. Don't know what's going on. All right, a little bit of corrector on this side and no corrector on this side. I can definitely see a difference. Um, it's subtle. It's interesting because this is, uh, as a corrector, is a little bit drier than a lot of the other correctors that I use, like the Laura Mercier Secret Concealer or the Sisley uh, Under Eye Concealer with that really peachy hue. This one's a little bit drier in texture, which um, is going to be better for those of you with oilier skin types, right? It's not going to shift as much. Here is my verdict on the Charlotte Tilbury Corrector. What I love about it is the tone. It's not so intensely orange that I have to put a concealer over this now. I could actually just leave and 
leave the house and it's done a really nice job of balancing those blue circles. What I don't love about it so much is the drier texture. It's just drawing attention a little bit to those very fine lines under my eyes. I shall continue experimenting with that one. On to concealer. I've got here the Zoeva Authentic Skin Perfector Concealer. And this, I believe, is meant to be sort of like a medium buildable coverage with a creamy finish, which is what a lot of people want, right? I'm just gonna pop a bit of that under my eyes. Damn, that's really nice. That, that concealer actually blew me away. I wasn't expecting to like it so much. It does have a, a sort of a medium coverage. It's really creamy. It was so easy to blend out. I just dabbed it out with my finger. It kind of reminds me actually a little bit of the NARS Creamy Concealer, um, but nicer. <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't say nicer, but like a little bit more malleable, easier to blend. You guys, please do not look too closely at my nails. I tried Polygel. Um, if you're not familiar with Polygel, Google it. It's a really interesting technology and one of my friends had a kit and we did it one night. And uh, let's just say that if you ever attempt Polygel, you should probably do it sober. <laughs> and now I can't get them off. I'm gonna try this concealer on this little blemish here. See how we go. Not bad, not great. What about over here? Yeah, no, I think I prefer that a little bit more as an under eye concealer or perhaps for brightening areas of the face, less so for blemishes. For powder, I'm gonna go in with the Nikia Joy Cosmetics Velvet Finishing Powder. Um, and I've actually used this one a few times and you know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of the Pat McGrath powders. Um, quite a similar formula. Nikia Joy is like the queen of content for oily skin. Um, so obviously powder was, you know, one of the first products that she created. I'm just going to use a very small amount under the eyes. I don't even think that I need any for the rest of my face because that pat that um, by Terry foundation is actually quite matte. I'm not going to need a powder. Just a little bit under the eyes. Yeah, that is a nice powder. And I'm not just saying that because I know Nikia. Like that is a really beautiful powder. My under eye area looks really smooth. Doesn't catch anywhere or look awkward. Mm, very nice. I'm really excited about this next product. We have here the Fenty Cream Blushes and also the Fenty Bronzers. Let's start with the bronzers first. So it says here, light as air, non-greasy cream bronzer that melts into the skin. This product is vegan, cruelty-free. There are sheer buildable shades and it is impossible to overdo. Interesting. So um, I got sent a few shades and I don't know if it's just me, but I often find that the Fenty bronzers lean very warm. So I'm not sure entirely how I'm gonna navigate these, but I'm gonna use Butter Biscuit, which is sort of a medium bronze. that has a little bit more of a pinky undertone. Just a little bit around my hairline. Hmm, that is sheer. <laughs> I don't really see too much. Let me go back into that uh, Butter Biscuit shade and just really load up the Beauty Blender. I have the tendency to have a really light hand, so maybe I just need to put a little bit more on. All right, now I'm seeing some product. Okay. I'm gonna agree with those claims. I think that this would be difficult to overdo, not impossible. I think it would be possible to overdo it, but you would really have to go hard to get too much payoff because this is such a sheer formula. You know, my primary concern when it comes to using cream products on myself is that sometimes it can lift the foundation underneath and give you a little bit of a, a patchy base. But I think because this product blended so beautifully and I didn't have to like do a whole lot of pressing and, and buffing, I can't see any lifting on my foundation at all. Damn. Oh, wow, I'm really excited now. All right, let's move on to the Fenty blushes. So I've looked on the Sephora website and these have been given a rating four out of five. And the description is exactly the same as the bronzer. So light as air, non-greasy cream blush, uh, vegan, cruelty-free, impossible to overdo. So yeah, it looks to be that the, the formula between the two cream products is the same. It's just the colors that change. Also worth noting that I notice some of the bronzers and some of the blushes have a very small amount of uh, reflect in them, like an actual shimmer, uh, but it's very, very subtle. Nothing, nothing obnoxious. 
This is the shade um, number two, Petal Poppin, which is sort of like a, a soft peachy shade. It's one of the softer shades in the, in the lineup, um, which is perfect for a basic bitch like me. Yeah, really nice flush. So I want to have actually have a quick chat about um, cream formulas. I tend to think of cream formulas as like a spectrum, right? On one side of the spectrum, we have really silicon dense cream formulas. And a really good example of this is the, the famous uh, Chanel Soleil Tan de Chanel. So this is a very silicon heavy cream formula. When you um, feel it between your fingertips, it almost feels like a primer, right? And these blend really beautifully and have a little bit more of a matte finish. So that's one side of the cream spectrum. On the other side of the cream spectrum, we have something like the Tom Ford uh, Shade and Illuminate. So this is a cream formula, but it's glossy. Right, it almost feels a little bit greasy between the fingertips and it has a really high shine. So these are the two spectrums of creams. I would say that the Fenty cream formulation is somewhere in the middle of that spectrum, right? So they're not super glossy, but they're not super, super silicon matte. They're somewhere in the middle. And I'm, I'm really pleased actually to see Fenty bringing out a formula like this. I think it's part of a larger, kind of a larger movement that I'm seeing in the beauty industry in general, where we're moving towards a little bit more of a natural finish, a little bit more of sort of an effortless, relaxed face. Um, or at least that's what I'm predicting. Really like these. Revlon has released some eyeshadow sticks and I love me an eyeshadow stick. So they've got the Colorstay Glaze Stick, which is um, a metallic formula and looks a little bit sheerer. And then we have the Colorstay Velour Stick, which is um, a matte finish. And these look so rich and densely pigmented. They look epic. This is the shade Sierra. I'm just gonna scribble that a little bit on my eyes and figure out what I'm doing at a later stage. Blending out beautifully, love it so far. Are you joking? I think that was one of the best eyeshadow sticks that I've ever tried. I don't want to jinx it, but wow. Can you see how, how soft that gradient is? A lot of the times um, eyeshadow sticks can kind of be a little bit choppy as they blend, but wow, this feels like a high-end formula the kind of the vibrancy of that shadow, but also the way that it's blending out. It feels like a really high end formula. Nice. I'm going to try the shade Luster, which is part of the glaze collection. So it's got a little bit more of a, a metallic finish. Yeah, this glaze, um, this glaze formula is pretty, the shade Luster. It's pretty, but I think the standout for me is really that velour formula because it's just so dense and incredibly easy to blend. While we're talking about eyeshadow sticks, we've got to mention the OG eyeshadow stick. This is the By Terry Ombre Black Star. I think that By Terry has released some new shades because these are new to me and I got super excited. So I think I will go for Immaculate Light. A little bit maybe in the center of the lid. By Terry eyeshadow sticks, I, I mean, I've been raving about them for a solid 10 years. They're just so beautiful. She does a really good job of infusing the eyeshadow stick with glimmers that look pretty, but not tacky. Like it's a grown up glimmer. So pretty. So pretty. And I'm gonna take the shade 22 Sunny Flash across the lower lash line, just for something really easy. I like using eyeshadow sticks on the lower lash line because they're really long wearing typically, so they don't smudge or move around. The By Terry Ombre Black Stars are cult classics for a reason. Um, those new shades are beautiful. I'm gonna give my lashes a quick curl and let's move on to mascara. I've got here the Zoeva Graphic Lash Mascara. I actually just found this at the, at the back of my drawer. Thought I'd give it a go. Yeah, that's a nice mascara. It's given me um, quite a bit of volume, a good amount of length, little before and after. It's a little bit globby on the ends, but I think that that will um, kind of subside once the mascara has dried out a little bit. I like my mascara when it's a little bit dried out. Onto lips, and we have here the Revlon Super Lustrous Mattes High Pigment Velvet Matte Finish Lipsticks. So on the little pamphlet here, it says the world's most iconic lipstick, now in matte. Um, it's infused with uh, moisturizing ingredients. It's a true velvet lipstick with intense color in just one swipe. So I'm expecting uh, um, a pigmented lipstick with um, a matte finish. I'm gonna try one of the nudes first. Hmm, I'd say quite a pinky 
kind of a pinky nude with a bit of a grayish undertone even. I would call this, it's super comfortable on the lips, really a lot of slip as you press your lips together. I'm not sure I'd call that 100% that matte, I'd probably call that a little bit more of a satin. Let's try the shade 007 on fire. This looks like a real orangey red. Wow. Oh, that's really pretty. Highly pigmented, check. Comfortable, check. Matte, mm, I'd say probably leaning a little bit more on satin or maybe a comfort matte as they like to call it nowadays. I was actually gonna change to a nude lipstick, but I think I'm actually really feeling the shade. Lucky last step, I'm gonna uh, spritz on a little bit of the Fenty Beauty What It Do Makeup Refreshing Spray. I've just discovered this recently. It's a relatively new launch. You guys, I feel an obsession coming on with this product. Look at this mist. I'm telling you, if there is a job opening for someone just to review mists, I am your lady. If you have tried any of these products, I am so curious to hear your experiences. Let us know in the comment section down below. Also, um, don't forget to check out my Instagram at Karima McKimmy and that little highlight called New Makeup if you enjoy PR unboxings and that's the kind of content that you like. And I hope you're having a wonderful day. I shall speak to you all very soon.